Hi, my name's David, welcome back to my channel. And uh, today it's rather an unexpected video. Uh, we've had some minor issues with our house network where the front security camera kept losing signal uh, because it's just on the very edge of what our Wi-Fi could do. So we went and got a Wi-Fi extender and tested it and set it up and it was good, but every 48 hours, every 12 hours, and 24 hours-ish slots, it would just fail. And did some testing and everything was set up right, everything was working fine, apart from we had too many devices. So to extend our Wi-Fi range outside the house, the cheapest and easiest option, which was a Wi-Fi extender, wasn't appropriate uh, because they only support about 16 devices. We've got over 30. So we've had to do a bit of research and we've come across the ASUS uh, ROG router. And this looks like it's going to do the business. It's got a more powerful Wi-Fi signal, so it should get to the front of the house by itself because we were only just on the range. So hopefully the signal will be stronger from this and resolve that problem. It's also got mesh networking technology built directly into the router. So if we find that it isn't, we can go for a second cheaper ASUS router and then push the mesh system onto that. And so it will act as a full blown secondary router, which will allow a large number of devices on it, but at the same speed and with the connectivity straight to this one to then get full internet speed with large number of devices on it and more stability and better IP address control because I like to have all my devices with static IP addresses just to remove any conflicts that might arise, especially with large quantities of devices that are constantly being turned on and off. So this looks like it's going to be the best way forward for us. Um, the specs on this router are phenomenal. It isn't brand new anymore, it's been out for a few years, but it is at the top of its game. Um, it's got a massive process, a massive amount of memories, four, um, eight Ethernet ports on the back, uh, some of which can be bound together to create single two gigabit ports rather than eight separate single gigabit ports. So if you have a home NAS storage and you, or you have a uh, video card, and a computer that's got two network cards in it that you can bound together to create a two gig port for gaming, that's what it's really designed for as gaming, but I can see it being excellent for a smart home as well. We can control our SSID. It intelligently breaks the SSID down into the two gig and five gigahertz range. So you just have one SSID that you set up on your devices and the router chooses which is the best one for you. So that's gonna be interesting to see how that works because that should make life easier and smoother so that when you're just on the outside of a five gig connection and you don't get good connection, it will just switch you over to the 2G connection. Be a bit slower, obviously, but it'll be stable and you shouldn't lose any information and shouldn't drop network. Um, also, when you use the mesh technology, when you bounce from one router to the other, um, it again, it seamlessly hands you over from one device to the other so you don't lose network connectivity. Do possibly drop one, maybe two packets, but it shouldn't lose um, actual connection itself. So we'll get on and have a look at what's inside. Certainly is much heavier and bigger router than our old TP-Link router. That does look nice. Yeah, that's quite substantially better made. You've got, there's the eight ports, the main LAN port, uh, LAN port, sorry. Two USB 3 ports and power supply. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and ten ports as well. So we haven't set those up. Instructions. Uh, 
and all eight antennas. This is a much thicker cable than you'd normally get for a power supply. So yeah, it's uh, got a proper mains cable power supply as well for it. So actually empty box is still way to fit it. They've obviously made that a luxury product. the threads. And on the side we've got LED WPS so you can turn the auto to con connect on and your Wi-Fi switch there as well. Obviously power switch at the back. Yes, this is what, the reason why we've got so many antenna uh, rather than the usual three that you'd get is because it's a tri-band router. So you've got two five gigahertz bandwidths and one two gigahertz bandwidth. The idea of that being is that there is a dedicated five gigahertz bandwidth for gaming. So you can set one channel or one uh, band not to be throttled at all to get the full speed so you get the uh, uninterrupted gaming experience no lag no broken frame rates or anything like that but i'm also hoping it might use that channel to synchronize other routers across it so therefore if you're not gaming and you're just trying to have a massive powerful network with lots of devices you have a 5G connection connecting your satellite routers as access points at high speed if I so need to do that, but I'm hoping just this one alone will be sufficient. There we go. And now just for the little power supply. Looks like it's come out of Apple Design Warehouse, this. I can leave that in there because that's going to be plugged in very close to the main socket. Now we've got to move to the server room where that's going to be set up. We're in our little server cupboard now and we're going to have to shut down our main internal router which connects us to the World Wide Web, that's our modem router. And I'm going to turn off our old router and I might as well shut down the accessories as well. At the moment, I haven't set this as modem only mode, which a lot of people do suggest, but I haven't been finding that this has necessarily been causing us any problems, uh, which is the Virgin Media Home Hub 3. Obviously, other providers have different hubs, they have different routers and different ways they work, but this one's been okay, but does have a very bad reputation. So if I find that the new Asus router doesn't fix it for us, I will be setting this into modem only mode because I've needed the extra three ports or four ports that's on the back of this um, to give us enough connections, but the new one has eight internal, so that will be just about enough by itself. So I'll get on and do that now. I'm going to use the Ethernet cable that came with the router. It feels that little bit thicker, so I assume this is going to be a um, Cat6 cable, which will have slightly higher bandwidth to connect to the 
Virgin router uh, to give us the fastest connection between the two which will give us a higher internet speed although our internet speed has been relatively good it's just been unfortunately kicking us out because either too many devices or not enough signal strength. Is this new cable will have better shielding and it will also have thicker wire which will give less resistance therefore higher throughput as well. That is excellent. I actually am ending up with more spare ports as well because ports aren't being used for connecting router to router. For now I'm going to connect connect it router to router because I haven't set it to modem only mode. Once I do I'll then be able to connect it to the WAN port which will allow this to be in full control. DHCP is already turned off on this one uh, to allow my old router to have been in as much control as possible but we'll set that up later on. Just want to make sure it's all going first. Once this is turned on I will then start doing initial settings getting this to how I want and then I'll start turning on the peripheries and everything else just so I get the home IP address as a IP address that I like rather than having the default one because I always like to change it makes life a little bit easier for fault diagnostics in the future. So we'll do that next. We can see now that it's powered up we've got a power light, Wi-Fi lights, internet not active light and network cables connected so now we can go through the software setup. Okay first of all we need to connect the router Wi-Fi and go to our web browser and we'll go to their setup page which is let me turn mobile data off there you go create a new network manual settings nope and I will just enter our password and we're going to leave it so that the 2G and 5G is the same network because that should make life easier although we will have to reset all our devices because of it apply I'm going to set new username and passwords because never leave them as standard. Okay, and now we just click next. We don't want to save the password. And now that's complete, we need to go to our Wi Fi settings and go back and find our router. So I should see the new network in here. There it is. I'll type in our Wi Fi password and connect. And we are connected. Now we're connected to our network, we can go back to the web browser. And we can now see we are logged into the full router settings. I will just reset the IP addresses and things to what I would choose if you just navigate around the setup. Obviously this also works perfectly on a full size screen on a PC as well or Mac. I'm just doing this on my mobile. But the interface certainly does look to be very intuitive and nicely set up. I like this. Okay, let's have a look. Where's the DHCP settings? Okay, I'll change this to what we had before just so it makes it a little bit easier for some of the devices to change. Uh, Once I've got the Virgin router in modem only mode, I'll probably rename the, renumber the IP address 
anyway but for now I will leave it like this certainly does seem to be a very very nice root configuration straight away very stable whereas the previous one I was using from TP-Link always had to refresh the pages to get it to work that's fair enough because obviously we have just restarted so go back to the page I enter my password and sign in this is now using the new IP address okay no don't save that if we come down to land settings hopefully we can see good it's now using that That's good. I will set this to one dot one dot one dot one. and apply and now start turning on the other devices and see how they kick in okay thank you very much for watching this video about the Asus ROG router um, I started off really really liking this router it was fast it was stable it was perfect I loved it it was expensive but I felt well worth the money and all the research that I did showed that it was a good top-end router on using it though about a week, two weeks into it, it kept getting DHCP not found. It would not connect, it would not be issued I, issuing out IP addresses, and I thought, oh, that's a bit odd, I'll do a firmware update. So I did the update, then I got another update, did that, and still kept getting these errors. And the only way to resolve it was to unplug it, wait 20 seconds, plug it back in, and it would be fine for a day, maybe two and it just wasn't stable. I couldn't get a good stable connection out of it. So I called, went through the technical support. If I'm calling them, something's gotta be wrong. And they very quickly said, it's a faulty router. Okay, these things happen. I sent it back, got a new one. First week, maybe two, beautiful, loved it. Recommended it to friends and families, they got one. And again, started getting DHCP server not found, no IP address. And I'm thinking, this is ridiculous. Okay, let's do very careful fault diagnostics. Maybe I've got some faulty equipment. I could have a damaged cable. Maybe another one of my devices are playing up. I know random other devices could knock out more than one thing. So, right, let's reset, restart. Everything's all up to date, one device at a time per day, slowly adding more devices. At the end of the week, got all my devices, or at least the majority of them up. Fine, next week, more devices. Ooh, bit of an error, okay. Right, let's take that one device out, that last one. Turn it all off and on again, restart it, minus that one device, still got the error. Okay, so maybe it's not that one device, but let's just factory reset, start again, leave that one device out and start with everything else but that one device. It was fine for a week. Then it started going wrong again. Still hadn't added that device. Okay, let's call Asus, find out what their tech support say. It's a faulty router. 
Well, that was quick, didn't even do any troubleshooting. Okay, maybe you've got a 40 patch, I'll send it back, get another one. Same story. My parents, they had one. Same story, and oh, this is getting ridiculous. And the amount of time I spent toing and froing, sorting out this router, just caused problems. So I've got more in this series about this router and the Wi-Fi mesh, because I love the idea of the Wi-Fi mesh. And I've gone and got other Asus products. So we're going to review other ones as well, seeing how they all interact and work. I know a lot of people have said how good the ROG Rapture router is. Maybe I've just been incredibly unlucky with half a dozen 40 routers, plus my parents getting 40 routers. I think there's a bug in the firmware. Because everyone, a lot of people have said, if you update to the Merlin firmware, which isn't supported by ASUS, it's much more stable. Well, if you're going to a third party firmware to get a stable device, something's wrong with either the firmware or the device, and it's probably the firmware. Because there's a firmware update that ASUS provide, which stop you from putting the Merlin one on. So I couldn't even try that. ASUS even recommended that, well, oh, just put the Merlin one on. That will fix your problem. And I went, ah, if I do that, what happens to my warranty? Um, it, it, it might be okay. So if I put it on under your guidance, I will still have a warranty. Um, and I can't say that for sure. It's a case by case basis. Carefully read their terms. If you use any third party firmware, your warranty is void. Oh, no, thanks, not working with these. I'm not going to risk my warranty on that. Not at that price point. If it was an old router and it was out of warranty, yeah, I'd put it on. Um, but I just can't afford to throw that sort of money away if something goes wrong with it. Maybe they'd have honored the warranty, especially as one of their techs said, yeah, try this. Sorry, I tell a lie. It wasn't Asus's tech that said that. It was um, one of my suppliers. They, they, they suggested that. And um, don't know, if, if I put on the Merlin firmware, it might have been perfect. But I didn't try it. I wasn't going to risk my warranty. So I had to send yet another one back. And that actually delayed all my videos because obviously no internet, couldn't upload anything. And just having to constantly go do fault detections. So this is an old video and so is a lot of my new ones that are going to be coming out. Are actually really old videos that I filmed ages ago and I'm now catching up. With the coronavirus it's given me a break from a lot of work and we can't do other bits. So hey, I'm catching up on work. But uh, it's one I can't recommend, unfortunately. I ha have got a link to it in the description if you want to give it a go. If you're really into gaming, if you really need that high speed, then if you can afford it, it's worth a punt. But don't be surprised if you find that you hit some sort of stack overflow limit or something. I reckon that's what it is. I reckon there's a stack overflow somewhere in the firmware and it just craps out on you. It's a shame. It should have been a perfect route for me. But it wasn't. As always, if you like the video, give us a good thumbs up. Please leave some comments down below because that always helps. It's always nice to interact with my viewers. Um, starting to get a nice stream of comments actually now. Um, so really do appreciate that. I know people are watching it and um, helping out the community. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you next time. Uh, all the best. Stay safe. Stay at home. Bye for now.